Hey guys, JTK here, and straight off the bat, I want to apologise for the uh, video quality. My camera is bugging out, and I am getting a new one soon. So the quality is pretty bad, and it's only 720p, so that's why it's a bit smaller. Uh, so we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Mullwind Collector's Edition today, and also I've got the original Collector's Edition here, well it's called the Imperial Edition. Um, you got the Molo Bowl statue that's sitting right here, and also you got this uh, fake leather bound book. Um, but it's actually really cool, and I really did enjoy this book looking through it when I was bored a few times. It's got a lot of nice artwork in it, um, and it's a lot of good art, and a lot of the uh, like, mini little stories in the book are actually quite cool too. And it's got information about like gear and stuff where things happen. A lot of lore in there as well. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, from memory, you got an imperial horse. Um, you got the imperial style, and you also got um, the ability to convert armor into an imperial style. I think there might have been a couple other things that you got. I think you got a pet as well or something with um, the original collector's edition. So this is the Morrowind collector's edition here in Australia. It cost about $140. Um, in the US, I'm not sure. I'm guessing that would be around $100, maybe $110. So as far as collector's editions go, it's actually quite cheap. And... I so far have been impressed so uh, obviously the, the, just the mole wind on the front and then there's just basically descriptions of what you get in the box um, you get the dwarven uh, armored warhorse you get the ability to change stuff into the Moloch Tong style the same as the original collector's edition but it was imperial you get the uh, dwarven spider pet which is pretty cool the white bear for the warden ultimate and some emotes that I really do not care about and then the really interesting stuff is the colossal the delvin colossal and the you get another leather bound back uh, art book by the looks of it and a map of Milewind. so that's pretty interesting let's see how things look inside so once you take the sleeve off here You've got the same thing on the front, the mile wind thing, but on the back here you've got a nice piece of artwork. Um, it's actually pretty cool. So let's open this bad boy up. Yep, that's how we go, like this. So as soon as you open up, you have got the map here, and it is pretty crap to be honest. Um, it's cheap paper. You can kind of see in the creases here the the actual ink starting to rub off so you can see the lines in the paper and it's just really dull and boring really um, and also whatever language it's written in I don't know some law nerd out there can probably tell me what what language it is but I can't read it um, so then under that is the leather bound book so it feels quite nice, like it is quite nice to feel. It's got this nice engra engraving at the front here. Um, so let's just open this up. So as soon as you open it up, it's got this nice textured piece of paper here, which is quite nice. It feels really nice. Um, and then you've got some art. So it looks very similar to the... Uh, original leather bound book that I got um, apparently my mate said this is meant to be a journal of someone going through one Tamiel or through Morrowind so that's pretty cool as you can see there's a lot of artwork in there it's actually really cool and it's probably the best uh, kind of on par with the original leather bound book that I've actually ever got in a collector's edition most of the time they're just trash poorly printed cheap paint, uh, cheap ink and that kind of stuff, but it's actually quite nice, so then we get the game, um, obviously the game codes and the four discs that it takes to install the game, 
Then the thing that everyone is interested in. This is the uh, Dwarven Colossus. So he looks pretty cool in there. So let's get him out. He's still got a cable tie here. We'll take that off him. And then he's got... Oh, let's just do that down there. So now he's got this blade. Um, I presume goes on his arm. Yep, goes on his arm. Something like that. Kind of... Doesn't make much sense at the moment where it sits because if it span it would cut his shoulder off. But I'm sure he extends his arm or something. Um, so it's quite solid. The hand, arms do move a little bit, but they still feel solid. The legs are very, very solid, and it's got some weight to it. Um, you know, compared to the Moloch's bowl statue, it's actually really solid. This um, has actually been knocked over a few times, and the tail's been broken. And one of his things up here has been broken, and his legs even been broken. So he <clears throat> he was really fragile, but this feels like it's not really going to break at all, even if you knock it over. He does seem to want to lean back a little bit, but doesn't seem to be an issue to the point where like I'd be worried about it sitting on a bookcase or something like that. So. Compared to the original collector's edition, I think they've improved. The figurines definitely got better. The one thing I really am kind of disappointed is that map. Um, I think they could have done a lot better job. <clears throat> but for the price, I can't argue. Like, I've got more than what I would have expected for, you know, that price. I've paid, um, you know, quite interested in this kind of stuff. Especially if you're going to buy the upgrade you know you don't have to spend too much more to grab it so it's definitely worth looking into and i hope you guys have kind of got an idea of the collector's edition and i hope this helped out some way so if you liked it leave a comment and if you haven't already sub to my channel for more videos i'll catch you later guys